They hope now that the calendar is flipped to conference play, that that changes, and they're going to need it to change against the highest scoring team in the country in the Alabama Crimson Tide. Coming in, scoring almost 93 a game. Alabama with an 8 and 5 record in non conference play. Vanderbilt at 5 and 8. The Tide will start things off. Here is Sears. Picks up that dribble out on the perimeter. Aaron Estrada. Gets it off to Ryland Griffin in the lane. The first basket goes to Alabama. You see the Vanderbilt starting five. Just the second time this group has started the game together. The other was against Memphis a few weeks back and really one of the better performances of the year for the Commodores and even in a loss. Monyon can't get it to go, but there is the follow by Vin Allen Lubin. And the Alabama starting five is the same we've seen for a while now. Aaron Estrada, the transfer, having a heck of a season as well. But Sears, high off the window, can't get it to go. And Mark Sears, who was leading the league in scoring at 19 points a game, will head to the free throw line. And we just saw the first two possessions from Alabama. The biggest challenge for Vandy's defense, keep those drives out of the lane. You had Griffin got all the way to the basket, able to finish it. And Mark Sears did a great job, which he has all year. He's Yes, he's a great three-point shooter, but... What he stepped up his game in this year was his ability to get to the rim and draw some fouls. So Vandy's perimeter defense, that's where it starts with them, which is easier said than done against Alabama. That everybody can put their head down and drive. Alabama coming off two games, over 100 points, 111 against Eastern Kentucky. They put up 101 against Liberty in their last outing, winning 101 to 56. Nato says his offense seems to be clicking very well right now. Likes where they are in that area, but defensively, as you just talked about, they have got to pick it up if they want to get to where they want to go, and that is deep into the NCAA tournament. Shot clock in single digits. They get it to the right man, Ezra Magnon, working on Sears. Boy, two lightning quick guards and a foul and count it. Well, it's... That defense you talk about, Alabama, is going to have to start with Mark Sears, and this is a day that's going to be tough for him. That's the beauty of Ezra Magnon, right? At the end of the shot clock, he's quick enough, talented enough, great footwork there. And what I love at the end of that, he knew he'd have to hit that fadeaway, possibly get hit, so he got his legs under him, great balance. So Magnon converts the three-point plays, an 88% foul shooter on the year. So both these guys are top 10 in points and assists in the SEC. Tells you how good of a matchup this is going to be today. Inside, loose ball. Shot clock at five. Aaron Estrada, fifth-year senior. The transfer in can't get it to go. That rebound to Wagi. Oh, Mark Sears, the left-handed, nice rotation jumper, buries for another three for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Bama, really good offensive rebound. They get 36% of their misses. Of course, long shots, long rebounds. Again, get it to the lane, kick out for three. The offensive numbers for Sears, percentage-wise, are outstanding. 53% from the field, 45% from behind the arc. You don't typically have your, your guards... Top, wow, top 10 in the field goal percentage. Well, there's a guy that could certainly increase his shooting percentage, just 30% from behind the arc on the year. If they can get him up to upper 30s, maybe even to the 40s, it'll be a whole different monster for Vanderbilt. But speaking of monsters, Grant Nelson, the 6'11", transfer out of North Dakota State with a throwdown. And that Vandy defense, again, you allow Bama to get to that paint, it's going to cause havoc because that's what they want to do. Get to the rim and finish or kick out for a three. And you see right there, Griffin going under the screen against Magnon. Estrada averaging five rebounds a game, grabs that one, takes it into the paint. Out of control, loose ball, last touched by Alabama. It will belong to the Commodores. Nate Oates now in his fifth year at Alabama. We were talking last night at practice just uh, how time flies. But boy, what a season they had last year.
Number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. There's Jerry Stackhouse. Finished so well last year, but have not continued that success to start this season. They won 11 of their last 14 to end the year. A lot of new faces that there was really hasn't been a lot of continuity either with some injuries this year in the non-conference play for them. Tyron Lawrence will cross over on Estrada right into a double team. Got it back. Left it short. Another rebound for Estrada. Griffin. Now the two things you want to do on a when you get back to transition defense, you got to stop the ball, but somebody's got to get back and protect the rim. Vandy too slow on that resulted in a, it's a great, great run out by Griffin straight to the hole. Well, Vanderbilt clearly trying to slow this pace down. And that'll be a foul against Alabama. It's been Alan Lubin trying to take it into the paint. That'll be our first time out. Alabama up three. Just underway here in Memorial Gymnasium. Next season on. Second in the conference in field goal percentage. Third in three-point percentage. And they lead the conference in free throw percentage. And they get there a bunch, too. Yeah. Just because of everything is look at the rim and attack. Make your decision in, in a second. What are you going to do? Attack or are you going to swing it or shoot it? Jason Rivera Torres, the freshman out of the Bronx, New York, on the floor, wearing number 23 for the Commodores. Also, Carter Lang, another freshman, getting some work early in this one. Lawrence hits Rivera Torres in the corner. Splash. He's been playing fantastic. He's probably been their best shooter uh, up to this point this year, and he's going to have to make some big plays like that. Down the floor, lost the handle. It will belong to Alabama. It's great attack by Lawrence. Little pump fake, sidestep. The ball fake is one of the greatest moves in the history of the game, Dave Neal. It must be used more effective like that in a sidestep. He could have went, took a dribble in for 15-footer, but he says, the way I'm shooting the three, coach, I'm giving you a little sidestep. <laughs> I, I would say this. He gets the steal, and he obviously is a freshman. So at that moment, I would have gathered myself, maybe go off two, finish strong, because he had three Alabama guys coming at him. He hit three threes against Memphis. Played well against Boston College. Here's a three from Alabama back the other way, and they answer the call. Ryland Griffin averaging nine points a game, his 19th three of the year. Vandy showing a little bit of that zone, right, to keep Alabama out of the lane. Now they've got to talk about those rotations. Just a little too slow getting out to the shooters. Lawrence. And traffic. Off the rim a couple of times and the tap goes down. Was that Lane that threw that back up there? It looked like, but yeah. it started with Tyron Lawrence. He's a hard driver with his left hand and his right hand. Alabama answers right back. Jaron Stevenson, the 6'11 freshman out of Chapel Hill, North Carolina, with a basket. Tassos Kamateras misses the jumper. Here's Sears. Griffin. Corner three on the way is perfect. Latrell Reitzel, the junior, burying the corner three. And we talked to Coach Stackhouse about the transition defense. You stopped the ball. You protected the rim. But you didn't identify and communicate all the shooters out there in the flow. Is that second pass, wide open shot. Alabama's at seven of eight and six in a row from the field. Mignon to the basket and a whistle against Alabama. You see it right there. Mignon stops the ball and then you had two on the catch there. That's where the communication comes in where you have to identify it. You've got the man, I got the man in the corner. That would prevent that. And that's just part of learning. You know, you have freshman coming in and playing for Vanderbilt that trying to learn the defensive system and what coach Stackhouse wants and then the transfers also it's not easy when you trying to figure out a new system than where you came from 
I mean, all these coaches these days have really had to change their philosophy on how to get teams ready for a season. No longer are you have two, three-year guys in a program. That's why it could be a topsy-turvy non-conference schedule for some of these teams. Mignon will take a short break. Paul Lewis, the sophomore guard, checks in for Mignon. And he's a guy that's, that's going to have to step up and make some shots. We know he can. Uh, we've seen him do it. It's just he's going to be more consistent. Alabama by four. Six and a half minutes into this one. Oh, what a great day. The SEC opening Saturday. Already some interesting results. Georgia going on the road to knock off Missouri today. The Dogs have won nine in a row. Mike White. Coach Mike White's got him rolling. Don't look now. We get another SEC team in the mix for the NCAA tournament. Can I get 10 in? Diabate checks into the game. He hadn't been used a whole bunch this year, but getting some early action. Nate Oates hoping he can provide them some maybe some a physical presence defensively, and if they can get some, some offense out of them, that would be a huge bonus. There's no doubt, and they cleared the side for him, and they went right after the freshman, uh, Rivera Torres. And you've got to be able, the number one thing for Vanderbilt's defense, first of all, has to be the perimeter. It's, it's easier said than done, stay in front of the ball, but you have to also understand that we need to have some help defense. If you've got somebody in a mismatch, where's your help? And then your rotations. Free throw off the mark, a 41% free throw shooter. Well, undefeated, number 22 ranked Ole Miss takes on fifth ranked Tennessee at Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville. Right after this one, the Rebels come in with the nation's longest win streak. It's coming up on the SEC Network. Might have to wear some shoulder pads and a helmet for that game. That's going to be a physical one. They went at Tennessee on Tuesday night, and the balls look like they are clicking now. Ole Miss is the real deal, too. They are the real deal. One of three unbeaten. Houston was dominating through one half of plate. Looks like they're going to stay unbeaten. James Madison, the other unbeaten. They're going on right now. Here's Estrada with another rebound. Boy, he seems to be everywhere today. Catch and shoot for Sam Walters. Folks, that is 6'10". And he's not shy. <laughs> he, he shoots. Hey, when he catches it, he's looking first at the rim. Can I get this off? And most of the time, he can't over his defender at 6'10". He's over 50% on the year from behind the arc. Part of that is understanding how to get your shot off, how to run to the open position. He sprinted right to that open area. Taylor tries to answer back, can't get it to go. Well, that was two possessions in a row. Bama's defense did not allow Vandy to get in the paint. Of course, Ezra Magnon's not in the game to do that. Lang the rebound off the miss from Walters. Here's Lewis with a stutter step at the free throw line. Rolls around, won't go. Rebound taken by Diabate. Stay with Alabama. 23-15. And this is how you run the fast break, the injuries. It's uh makes for yeah, they're there now, but Coach Stackhouse believes that they continue to get better throughout the season. We've seen it last couple of seasons with Vandy. Once conference hits, they start rolling. Sears pinned in that corner. Lewis defending him. Shot clock at 12. Sears oh. into traffic. Drew the foul and head to the free throw line. That's a guy that they list at 6'1, but he might be six feet. <laughs> yeah, well, he's strong. He's got that strong base right there. He feel, he knows he's stronger than Paul Lewis, but he reminds that's like a Jalen Brunson move. You know how Jalen yeah. Brunson is sort of strong, low to the ground, great body control. Uh, he can take his guy in the post, but he also is under control enough where that double team comes. He's pitching it back out for a three. Now, the biggest thing. I can point to right now Vanderbilt's defense is just their inability to keep Alabama out of the paint. Right now it's eight points to zero points in the paint favoring Alabama. They average 38 a game in the paint. Vanderbilt trying to find a little bit of offense. They've missed four straight from the field. They trail by double figures. 
Here's Lubin. Jordan Williams kicks it to Evan Taylor around the rim and out. Another good look for Vanderbilt. Just can't seem to get it to go down. Matter of fact, we're talking to Jerry Stackhouse about that, about his offense, and he says, man, we... When you look, there are stats that break down quality <laughs> shots. They're top ten in the country in quality shot opportunities. Guys that are good shooters haven't been shooting them well. Hadn't been making them. And, and that's it. You, Vandy, watch, watching their offense for the last couple of years, you know they're going to get good shots. Oh, Sears, what a pass. What a pass, lefty to lefty. And Walters knows where to be. And I think that's part of also, too, is you have a great passer in Sears understanding where his guy is going to be, and Walters knows where to set up. Up ahead to Nelson. Cross-court pass. Another wide-open look, and Alabama's going to make you pay. Latrell Wrightsell, Jr. It is on, folks. Alabama. You, I'm, I'm just saying. I, I mean, I always lean, you know, towards my partner. Today. To your partner for that day. <laughs> Well, there's a few, few yeah. people we can... Right, let me just, I, like, Tom Hart's out. Right. Mike Morgan's <laughs> in the conversation. All I know is I walked out of here without a miss. Now, they were all inside 10 feet, but nonetheless... <laughs> 10.35 to go in this one, and Alabama's already put up 31 points. Well, Magnon is and Lawrence are the two guys who can get in the lane off the dribble right there. Obviously, got it knocked away, but at least he got in the lane. Estrada, he lines it up off the back of the rim, but another chance here after the Nelson rebound. Griffin got to the paint. But there's just no resistance. There, there's no resistance. Alabama dribble, paint touch, kick out to the three. Not open, dribble, paint touch, kick out to the three. Not open, dribble, paint touch, finish at the rim. It's, there's got to be some resistance on the perimeter defense. Inside to Lubin. Kicks it out. Here's a three from Williams. He's able to connect. Excellent job there. Now, I would consider that a pay touch. Even if it was in the post. You got it inside. Great look cross court. And Lubin with the block shot on Sears. Lubin defended by Nelson. Nice pass inside to Mignon. Lubin playing really well. Two great passes. The previous play, he was a little deeper in the post, but recognized that there was going to be some sort of a double team. I love that. Mignon moving without the basketball. Now, Alabama, right? They've got all five defenders watching Lubin continue to move without the basketball. Alabama has been very aggressive in their half-court defense, so there's going to be some backdoor cuts by Vandy. Malik Presley checking in his first action. The freshman out of San Marcos, Texas, playing in his 11th game this year, averaging about nine minutes a game. Lawrence heading to that bench. I think Coach Stackhouse is looking for anybody who is going to get down, defend, not allow their guy to get by him. Because Bam is so good, you command that double team, and they're going to find the open guy. Estrada keeps it alive. Nice pass to Sears, and they're going to say a foul. A little push in the back. Was that one yawn with a push on Sears? No, it's going to go against Tassos Kamateris. Young man out of Athens, Greece, by way of University of South Dakota. See that he's Griffin does a good job and he he forces that defense to send two guys and there was almost there was three at Vandy actually digging in there. Shot clock at eight. Griffin lost the handle, gets it back, and throws it away. Much better defensive possessions, both. The previous one in, in this one right here by Vanderbilt. See the intensity pick up. Vanderbilt, 7 of 19 from the floor. They're at 36%. Meanwhile, Alabama's at 73%. Well, that's the other thing you got to figure out. 
How do we get the ball in the hole to slow down Bama? <laughs> Once they get a defensive rebound, they start running. Amateros trying to get it inside. Last touched by Alabama. It'll stay with the Commodores. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Yep. Had that mismatch with Lubin. Sears was on Lubin. So it was a good idea. It was just a little too late on that pass. Right, so back on the floor for Alabama. Vanderbilt's won their last two SEC openers. They've actually had the advantage over the Crimson Tide. Every, when they open up SEC play with Alabama, they're nine and five against the Tide. Oh my. <laughs> as good of a, that whole sequence was about as good as you're gonna see. That's a six-foot guard. Well, but he had the presence of mind. He throws it in the post, giving cuts right off the post, gets it back, and then he's crafty and clever as anybody out there finishing around the rim. It's like Rod Strickland. Did That's the old school Rod right I do. I'm a kid. I remember Rod Strickland. Great finisher around the room for a guard. One of the best ever. Great defense. Here's Presley. And a foul against Alabama. That's going to go against Sam Walters. But Vanderbilt certainly has picked it up on the defensive side. They've cut it to 10. 7.38 to go opening half. And it's been Presley. Give credit to Jordan Williams as well. That's where it starts for Bama. We understand that. Presley at the free throw line, just 50% on the year. Now he's only been there four times. Well, that, that's part of having a high percentage is, is getting comfortable being at that line. But that's what I'm talking about with a freshman. Do you want to get minutes? You look at what this team is lacking. What do we need? We talked about making open shots. Yes, that's simple. But the other side of it is if I can get down and defend and show coach that I can do that consistently, you can depend on me doing that, you're going to get minutes. Because that's another area that they need to improve on. Well, Sears not on the floor right now for Alabama. Ooh. Shake and bake move from Nick Pringle. Can't get it to go, but there's Presley getting his hands on it. Finds Monyon now. It's a nine-point game. Alabama led by as many as 18 here in the first half. Andy's defense has been able to stay in front so that now your defense doesn't have to get in rotations. And Bama, that's where they hurt you once your defense starts moving in rotations. Well, that one's off the mark from Jordan Williams. A good look. Estrada. Boy, one young. We talked about his offense, but man, but he is a get his nose in your chest defender. And that's a, a mistake. We talked about how good Presley was. That was over help, okay? Magnon is defending right there. Has the offensive player in front of Mastrada. He could make Mastrada take a tough shot over me. You over help, you leave your guy for a wide open three. That was, those are the things Coach Stack was telling us about trying to teach his yeah. young fellas not to make those types of mistakes. There is Tassos Kemateris. A 44% three-point shooter on the year. He's now made 21. Estrada in the corner. Back to Estrada. Walters has to give it up. That shot is off the mark. Tapped around. Here's Mignon back the other way. Ezra, they left him wide open off the back of the rim. Loose ball on the deck, and Alabama wins it. Three on two, run out. And a hard foul. Williams sends Reitzel tumbling to the deck. And, and Coach Nate Oates, we talked to him, he said, Magnon's so good, we're going to have to go under that screen, right, and see if he can't make a couple threes. And Coach Oates was right about that. No hesitation. Alabama understanding. Let's go north and get to the rim. Great pass. Right cell's been playing well. Latrell Wright cell 
transfer from Cal State Fullerton first year in Tuscaloosa three years at Cal State Fullerton Boy, he's coming off a season best 19 points and a season high five three-pointers against Liberty Excellent free throw shooters made them all this year Probably should have waited till he made this one before saying that. Oh, no, you're not a jinx type of guy. Oh, I am, brother. I am. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank switch. you. Thank you, Latrell. <laughs> well, and he's been a guy that they want. They've been encouraging him to shoot more. He's He would catch it in the offense and hesitate a little. And Coach Oates is like, brother, you got to let it fly. you got to attack or keep the ball moving. And and I think that's, that's the beauty of Coach Oates' offense is it gives you the freedom Here's Griffin back the other way. Sears back on the floor now after a few minutes catching his breath. And a push by Presley on that baseline. Stevenson with the basketball. Nice little action on there. Presley was overplaying, anticipating that pass to the wing. Was that right cell? Uh, actually, Griffin. Took that screen into the corner. And another foul on Presley as he was grabbing <laughs> Jaron Stevenson. Now it's one and one. That's a 17 foul. Life of a freshman also is understanding what you can get away with and what you can't get away with. Give him another couple of years, he'll know exactly how to how to grab the jersey. How a little to bit. grab the yeah. jersey, how to push the hip, how to slap the wrist. Step on a sneaker every once in a while. No, I don't condone that. So a good foul. Ended up working out for him, right? We uh, we had a guy every time he got fouled. My coach said, "This is a turnover when you go to the free throw line." <laughs> uh, I won't say who. There's a turnover. Corner three. Got it. Ryland Griffin. That is the. Seventh, eighth, three of the game for Alabama. They're now eight out of 13 behind the arc. A lot of that is understanding as a shooter. Where do I run? And he ran to the furthest part of the corner, make it difficult for that defense to run back and find it. Onyan in the corner. Lawrence goes baseline. Reverse layup. A little bit shy. Ooh, Tassos Comateros with his second three. Weitzel. Back to Latrell. Dumped it inside to Pringle. Boy, boy, he got up in the air and he got hit across the forehead. Might have tweaked his lower back. Lawrence, boy, had a good look at it. Won't go. Sears. Bodies flying everywhere. Sears. Gonna belong to Vanderbilt. So a 40 to 30 game. Right. So they're up. I had said up 11 going into the break. They're actually up 10 coming out of the break. You see how that works? You never know when you go in how you're going to come, come out. out. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> you stay especially with you. Especially you walk into any building with you, you never know how you're going to come out. <laughs> you never go in. Never come out the same way you went in, that's for sure. <laughs> nice turnaround from Evan Taylor. So you get, you add Evan Taylor now into that offensive discussion, which he is a good scorer. Coming out of Lehigh. Vandy back in that zone. Too late getting over to a shooter. Got lucky there. Brent Nelson hasn't shot it as well as he's had in his college career. I think we all understand he's going to find his stroke to be more consistent. Taylor, spin move, threw it up too strong. That rebound into the hands of Nelson. Sears, 2.40 to go for halftime. Here's Estrada. Lost the handle, but got it back. Griffin for three. And there is a foul on the rebound as Diabate just tossed the freshman Jason Rivera Torres to the deck. It, and there's one thing I'll say about transition defense. If you if your offense takes the right shot and Evan Taylor 
took a shot there right around the rim. It gives your offense time to get back. And, uh, your defense, excuse me, get back and set up. It's a good fight by Rivera Torres, the freshman from the Bronx. Said you're not going to push me around. And if you do, you're going to get a foul called on. <laughs> Refs cut my back. Manyan back to Rivera Torres. Manyan tell everybody get away. He's got a mismatch. He's got the 6'11 Nelson on him. Six feet for 6'11. Little up and under oh, move man. off the window. That's just nasty. That's just creativity. <laughs> I don't understand the touch. Deep three from Griffin off the front of the rim. Loose ball on the deck. And let's see. Last touch by Alabama. It will belong to Vanderbilt. And so, how about Grant Nelson? Stays in front of him, goes straight up. But Ezra understands. He's made that move so many times. Did you see the little ball fake? He steps through the ball fake, which sends Grant Nelson towards the baseline. And like I said, Ezra understands how to make that move. He's done it so many times in his career. He's comfortable doing it. Hard to fault Nelson for anything defensively. Just a heck of a shot by Mignon. It was the ball fake that did it. That gave him just enough space to turn back around and get that shot off. Vanderbilt on a 7-0 run. Rivera Torres, a little bit short. Rebound to Nelson. 90 seconds before the break. Griffin in traffic. And I think he traveled with that basketball. It'll be long to the Commodores. Hey, let's face it. Vanderbilt was down 18 midway through this first half. It looked like Alabama was about to run him out of the gym. They've cut this thing to six, Pat. Well, they found... They found some guys that wanted to get down and play some defense. And that's that's the difference to me. You had Alabama halfway point had eight points in the paint halfway through the first half. They've had two since. So keeping them out of the paint is critical in the half court because now they can't pitch it out for a three, get to the free throw line, and of course finish in the lane. Good catch by the youngster Rivera Torres. Go back it out now with Tyron Lawrence. Shot clock at five. Tyron. They dump it off inside to Evan Taylor. Shot clock expires, and it'll belong to Alabama. Good defensive stand by the Tide here with 55 seconds to go in the first half. Tough position for Lawrence to get it in that area for Taylor because you got big Grant Nelson, 6'11". Really good shot blocker and really had nothing to do. is caught it behind the back. First 10 minutes of this half, Alabama was shooting 74% from the field. They're down to 56% right now, but having a tough time hanging on to the basketball. And they're going to call a foul against Estrada. 1-3-1 one, one pays off there for Vandy. Mark Sears probably understands. Can't dribble through three guys. Two of them there converging. And he left his feet, so it was a good job. I don't know if that was... Come a terrace whose responsibility is that corner. So he just hedged at Sears. Sears picks up his dribble, stand, uh, jumps, and tries to get it to the corner. And good recovery by Come Terrace. And you get Tyron Lawrence down to the free throw line. That's the 17th foul against Alabama. So opportunity to cut into this six point Alabama advantage. Alabama's almost four minutes. Without a point. Well, you can credit all that to the switch of defense, the 1 3 1, which is designed. Obviously, they, they want to keep him out of the lane, and they've got some open looks, too, that they just haven't made. And I think, in some ways, Vandy's done a good job of throwing some double teams at the ball handle and sped them up and put them in difficult positions. Tyron Lawrence. 72% foul shooter on the year. Did not play the first four games of the season. Had an injury. He is healthy now and converts on both of those and has cut this to four. And Vanderbilt will have another opportunity to have the basketball here in the first half. And that three-quarter court, one three one make sure that happens. Bama can't get up a, a quick bucket. Try to go two for one. Estrada. Mignon was down there boxing out Mohamed Wagi. 
Last touch by Alabama. How about the six foot Mignon down there battling with six ten guys? Well, he's quick. That, that's one of the things you talk about a rebounder being big, strong, athletic, tall, all that. But if you're as quick as Ezra is, any loose ball or that ball comes down to his area, he's he's snatching that up. And, and that's why you've got to send all five guys there, no matter what the size is, because quickness sometimes is the determining factor for getting that rebound. Here's Ezra with 20 seconds on the clock. This has been a remarkable turnaround here in the first sure. half. Two seconds, Mignon fires away, and that one won't go. But nonetheless, with 10 minutes to go in the first half, Alabama led third. Bill, you see the numbers, and everything everything favors Alabama with the exception of one area, and that is the turnover department. In the last 10 minutes, Alabama had a tough time holding on to the basketball. So I think Vandy's done a good job of keeping Bama off the glass. Bama gets 36% of their offensive rebounds. They only got three. So the Vandy's competing on the glass. They're not turning the ball over, and they're making some shots. Like, like we said, you know, it's you're going to get open shots in this Vanderbilt offense, and they're they're last in the league in three point shoot, but tonight they're making them, and and you see the difference. You stay in games. Sometimes it's just very simple, Dave. You make it simple, <laughs> and I need that in my life. Thank you. Then Allen Lubin with the offensive foul on the other end on that moving screen gives it right back to Alabama. Alabama went the last 440 of the first half without a basket. It didn't take them long to get on the board here in the second half. No, and the thing is, for Vanderbilt, you had been keeping Alabama out of the paint right there. And Rylan Griffin basically had a nobody, no resistance right there to block. How about Sears with seven points for Alabama in that first half on only two shot attempts? And that was one of the things we talked about the top of the broadcast where you think of him you watch him last year yes he is a three-point shooter great three-point shooter but what he's improved on this year because he's in that lead guard position is getting downhill getting to the free throw line getting to the rim facilitating for others and Griffin and Wright still have responded for him so Van Allen Lubin at the free throw line 85 percent this year at the line We'll have a women's basketball quadruple header tomorrow afternoon right here on this very network. And of course, you can always see it on the ESPN app. It starts at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central with this great rivalry game between Kentucky and Tennessee from Knoxville. Both teams have won three straight coming into this one. A quadruple header of SEC women's basketball tomorrow on the SEC network. Griffin, corner three, rolls around and out. Lubin with another rebound. That's his fourth of the game. Transfer from Notre Dame. Mignon. That won't go. Lawrence kicks it back. Alabama just trying to take some of this clock off the board with each possession. Nice strong move, but nothing to show for it by Lawrence. Tied back the other way. Nelson to Griffin. Estrada. Second chance opportunity. Estrada now. Sears catch and shoot. Too strong. A third opportunity. Wagi keeps it alive, kicks it back out. Griffin can't hang on to it. It was almost a catch and shoot for you, Dave. The thing was bounced to us. Great recovery by Vandy's defense because Bama was playing five on four. And you saw how they were moving the basketball. Vandy was able to get out, rotate quickly to make sure to stop that ball handler and put the hand up on some shooters. But you saw that sequence where Bama was able to get on that offensive glass because of those long shots from the three-point line. Good job stopping the basketball there. Help. 
and you force up a quick shot. Now the only thing you got to do is clean up that defensive rebound. Vandy did a good job in the first half. Thomas Harris, air ball, coming off the screen. Gary Stackhouse just puts his head down. Well, the previous threes that he made were a catch and shoot. It wasn't coming off the screen. Coming off the screen, you got to turn your body, you got to plant your foot, you got to turn your right foot around, get square, get on balance, and he didn't. Estrada, nice move. Finally on the board. Estrada's first basket of the game. He's now one for five from the field. Estrada, remember, coming off that near triple double in their last game with 13, 10, and 9. That's a challenge. You're going to pressure Bama. They understand how to get out in front of that basketball. Estrada could have pitched it out to Grant Nelson with the corner for a three if he didn't take it himself. Onyon hangs in the air. Out to Williams. That won't go. Come to Terrace down there with an offensive rebound. He'll reset the offense and he turns it over. Oh. <laughs> That would have been a tough catch there. Yeah. And a traveling violation against Swaggy. Mohammed, a third-year player out of the Bronx, New York, transferred in from West Virginia. Bama gets up and running those lanes quick. Sears got to that three-point line. Estrada tried to make that best. Tough, tough pass if Swaggy even caught it. He would have had to turn himself around. He could have finished it right there under the hoop. Mignon, 4 of 10 from the field. He has a dozen points. Ezra. Shot clock in single digits. See defense going under. There's a switch there. Rebound to Strata. Here's Sears. Again, Sears leading the conference in scoring at over 19 a game, sitting on seven. Hits Estrada here, who buries the three. Boy, he had been struggling, missed four straight to start this game, and now back-to-back -back baskets. The value of Sears there, he's 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 obviously a really good scorer, so you've got to respect that. The defense collapse, Estrada runs over, creating that passing lane, easy pass out to him at the top of the key. That's exactly what Coach Nate Oates has taught for many years. Lawrence That shot is rejected inside by Nelson back the other way Sears Lost the handle got it stuck on his hip Mignon Boy does Mignon ever get tired <laughs> Jeez, I'm tired watching I was gonna have to play this entire game out too for, for Vandy to have a chance Lawrence in the paint Ooh, count the basket the right-hander running right shooting left fouled in the process And he'll have a chance to complete the play when we come back if you're defending him You know, he's gonna put his head down and he's gonna drive hard right left Actually did was able to turn his body get that one up left. It's Vandy within seven you need to keep Ezra Magnon in front of you out of the lane he, he it's difficult to do not many people can do it But that's the number one thing you want to do and if he does that, and he's been able to do it tonight, he's got 12 points. What you try to, hopefully you can do, is him not score and facilitate. And have a high assist game too and get his other guys going. Just one of the other. Estrada misfires there. Offensive rebound and put back. Well done by Nick Pringle on the offensive glass. Lang, the freshman wearing 35 at the top of the key, gets it to Lawrence. They'll dump it inside now to Evan Taylor. Taylor spins and fires and left it a little bit short. Boy, Pringle knocked his own man to the floor. Is that Estrada? I believe it is, and they'll stop the whistle. Boy, as Aaron Estrada, I couldn't tell if it was an elbow, but Pringle got him. Oh, he's got a little blood coming out of that. Might be able to come back in this game, but he has been so key for Bama. Being able to get better shots. We talk about Vinny's defense improving. Estrada's been helpful of getting some easy looks for Bama.
little up and under move. Nice work by Ryland Griffin. Griffin up to 15 points now, seven of 10 from the field. This young man that's averaging just nine a game. Well, and he's one of the best, if not your best defender as well. So if he can defend on the best player of the opponent and give you that kind of an offense, worth his weight in gold. Mignon, pull up jumper. He's got 14 to lead the Commodores. Kind of sense that he understands he's going to have to put on a performance on both ends like he did against Memphis to keep him in it. Corner three, no good this time from Walters. Hit from there earlier. Long outlet. Can Lawrence save it? Stepped out of bounds. Can't do it. Boy, Rylan Griffin. Told you averaging nine points a game. He has scored double figures in three straight games for the Crimson Tide. It's picking up some offense because Sears is stuck on seven. Yeah, and he's had to battle with Ezra Magnon the majority of the game. And also, we talked about how he's accepted not only scoring, leading scorer in the SEC, but also top ten assist man. Here is Sears, lost the handle. He's frustrated getting back down the floor. Lawrence. Boy, poked out of there by Pringle. Hey, what we're watching two high, high-level point guards <laughs> in Sears and Mignon. Of course, Sears leading the league in scoring at 19 a game. Meanwhile, Mignon averaging 16 and a half points a game is ninth best in the league. And they're a little bit of different style how they go about doing it. Sears a little bit stronger, tries to get you on his hip, slows you down, and of course Ezra Mignon is explosive like a rocket. White so Sears, we were waiting for him to get a shot off. That's tough. Another great ball fake. Love that. Ball fake, sidestep, balance. Eleven-point lead for the tie. They led by 18 in the first half. Vanderbilt cut it to four at the break. Rivera Torres. Working to Lang. Here's Lawrence. Gets into Lang. Rebound to Sears. Oh, nice pass. Nice job by Sears, but good defense on the other end, not to give up the layup by Evan Taylor, but the tide heading to the free throw line. Here's Mark Sears, as you see there again. The basketball gets in the paint. Defense collapses. Now you have Tyron Lawrence, a little off balance. Sears does a great job with that ball fake sidestep. The key to that is, though, getting your balance on that sidestep. Make sure you're not rushing it. So Nelson and Stevenson on the floor now for Alabama. Or Sam Walters out of the Villages, Florida. I always thought that was like a senior living area. <laughs> He's anything but a senior. Did Eric Estrada used to do some commercials. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I love that. I love those. Oh, uh, but Walters can really shoot it, man. A four-star, top 25 power forward in the country coming out of high school. What I love is no hesitation. He catches, shoot, things going straight up. There's Lawrence. Boy, you get him that shot. He's going to make it nine times out of ten. And you talk about somebody with no hesitation. He's going to catch it and attack you. Right hand, left hand. Boy, deep three from Nelson. No good. Rebound to Rivera Torres. He says, I'll oh, just do man. this myself. <laughs> what a freshman with confidence. Out of the Bronx. Created some space for himself. Just enough space. There's a little fake, Ooh. and Nelson ran right into Tor Rivera Torres. That's going to be a foul against Vanderbilt. No Crowd doesn't like it. Alabama will take it. They lead it by nine on the road. Getting a little hostile here inside Memorial. 
Make the defense collapse, kick out for threes, and you got seven rebounds, so you got a very good rebounder out there, too. Nelson, an excellent free throw shooter at 92% coming into this game. He had hit 48 of 52, but didn't get that one to go. Was it tough to shoot in this gym? It was, you had to get used to it, for sure, just because um, it's a little more wide open. Yeah. And, you know, obviously you've got the elevated floor. Uh, but once you do, it's it doesn't take long. I didn't have a problem today. <laughs> <laughs> of course, there was no defense on it. No. <laughs> Shot clock at six. Rivera Torres. Oh, what a move by the youngster. Well, that's a freshman well, playing we, like he's been around the block. We, time we, we, we've seen him do everything. He can shoot the three. He's got a mid-range pull-up that we've seen. We've seen him take it hard to the hoop right there. You know what else he does? He brings energy. Sure does. Estrada. A little busted lip. Oh. Nice pass. Sears can't get it to go. Rivera Torres. Lawrence. Back to Rivera Torres. Swinging around the perimeter. Lawrence gets the screen from Comateris. Step back three, no good. And you talk about Bama's defense, that's a win for them right there. A fadeaway three. A good defensive victory. Nelson for three. Boy, a paint touch, a kick out. And Alabama hits another three. That's the way Coach Oates draws it up, man. And, and that's why it's so important to be able to stay in front of the ball handler. And you do, they're going to, if you don't, they're going to make you pay. Alabama's hit 10 three pointers. Vanderbilt's hit five. As we see wide open. Oh my God, it was like the Red Sea parted right there. <laughs> he could have laid it in. Or he had the option of pitching it back out to Nelson. And three, they'll always be worth more than two, my friend. You could try to make the two more valuable, but it's just not going to work. It's just not going to work on paper. <laughs> right. Especially a wide open three like that. How about Rivera Torres up to nine? Averages seven on the year. But with his size, athletic kid, can get off any shot out there in the court. Another turnover. That's one thing Alabama is going to have to clean up. Rivera Torres misfires. They're a four-star recruit coming into Alabama this year. Stack says he's kind of a late bloomer, but feels like he's got a chance to be a really, really good player moving forward. And he's said talking about his freshman class. He goes, you know, in this day and age at Vanderbilt, we can't go get a sophomore or junior to come transfer in it's got to be a grad transfer or we got to build them up as freshmen and he really likes especially this class and, and Rivera Torres is part of that elite class he brought in and he comes up with a steal here the layup is good <laughs> he is bringing all the energy smart player great understanding one thing I love is he's attacking the basketball Back to a seven-point game. Stevenson out of the corner, quiets the crowd. Mignon. Rivera Torres again left a little bit short. Sears, deep three, no good. Boy, Nate Oates not happy. That long rebound had a chance. Alabama had a chance to get their hands on it, but Vanderbilt picked up the basketball. And here's where he, they've been playing for a while, so if you're going to shoot this, you better get your legs underneath you. There is a foul as Mignon will head to the free throw line when we come back, although he looks like he might have tweaked something.
That is a new story for sure. To bend your knees a little bit more, get a little bit more strength on that free throw. They may bring him out and tape it up for him. Well, we told you how much Jerry Stackhouse appreciates Ezra. This is what he said. Biggest heart of anyone he's ever coached. That's saying something. And gets them both. Let's see if he's going to come out. He will. Tyron Lawrence will check in for him. Pushes his point total to 16. And he is making his way back to the locker room. So we'll see if they take that thing up tight. He comes back. White, so what quick shoot. Loose ball on the deck. And a tie up. Arrow favors Alabama, so we'll stay on this end of the floor here inside historic Memorial Gymnasium. And, and Vandy with that 1 3 1. Alabama's done a good job against it of getting the ball quickly to that corner shot. And that's what's been open. Alabama hasn't been able to take advantage of that corner shot. So we'll see moving forward if they're going to start knocking down that corner three against the 1 3 1 and make Vandy's D pay for it. That's real right, so we'll inbound it. For the Crimson Tide, 7.36 to play in this one. Again, if you're just joining us, Alabama led by 18 midway through the first half, but Vandy cut it to four at the break. They've been trying to play catch up since then. Sears kicks it back to Ryland Griffin. Gets the shot off at the horn and taken away by Sears. Camatero's had it for just a brief second, and Sears steals two. That was about that. You could almost see Sears coming from behind, getting that steal. And then you see how crafty he is and difficult to stay in front of. And we talked it was just a few minutes ago about Vandy and Ezra, and then the impact he has of Vandy being able to pull this game out, of him having to. Be out there to be the general on offense and defensively the top of the defense. That is a difficult shot, but Alabama bails out Rivera Torres with the foul. That's going to go against Ryland Griffin. So three free throws coming up for the freshman. I'm going to say there's no doubt about this. Great job by Tyron Lawrence to get under the defense and. Rivera Torres, if you see, he slid to the corner to create that open passing lane. And that's just being off balance. I mean, there's one thing jumping to contest a shot. Rivera Torres. But that was an off balance contest of that three point shot. Rivera Torres at the free throw line. On the season, he's a 79% foul shooter. Do not forget, coming up right here on the SEC Network, how about unbeaten and 22nd ranked Ole Miss, number five Tennessee from Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville. It'll be a barn burner for sure. Tennessee playing at a very high level. Defensively, aren't many better than Rick Barnes' club in the country. But Ole Miss, under first-year coach Chris Beer, they have found something. Well, they have, and he's got, they've got plenty of talent on that team, too. Kicked away. Here's Lawrence. Tyron. Off the front of the rim from Evan Taylor. Boy, he is just uh, struggling from the field. Boy, that one, speaking of struggling, Stevenson missed everything. That was, he He hit the foam, at least, I think, in the bottom of the backboard. And Vandy, even without Mignon, defensive rebound, take care of the basketball, be patient and run your offense. You're going to get good looks. Over and back. Now that was a situation where I think Tyron Lawrence was just anticipated that Taylor was going to be wide open right there, which he isn't. But again, doesn't 
didn't really look before he made that decision sort of pre-programmed that he was going to make that pass without looking Sears oh behind the back off the window magnificent well that's the other side of it too you're gonna have to get somebody in there that can keep, stay in front of Mark Sears whether that's Presley or if Lewis can do it blocked by Pringle here's Sears Sears wants it now double teamed in the corner though he is tied up and in some trouble gonna have to take a timeout good quick double team by Vanderbilt go to the corner yep quick timeout smart both strong great body control they play they can play fast they play slow but they, what they do is they slow you down as a defender because he puts you on his hip he says he'll come with me and then he can finish so easily at the rim with both hands Oh, Rivera Torres almost had a steal. It does create some havoc, and Vanderbilt has it. Rivera Torres, by the way, with a career, a se well, a career and season high for him since he's a freshman <laughs> yeah, with 14. Right. And that's what Vandy's got to do: it create some turnovers, gain rebound, run some offense. Oh, that was a nice shot in rhythm for Tyron Lawrence. Good rotation. He knocks home the three, his second of the game. He's up to 15. It's a great pass, catch and shoot three. And Mark Sears seems to be able to get wherever he wants on the floor. It's a nice swing pass by Williams. Saw Mark Sears a little too far in that help position. Just enough room to get that jump skip pass. Over to Tyron Lawrence. Well, without Mignon on the floor, they got to find some offense, and Lawrence is a good option. And a hold. So Taylor will pick up that foul. That's just the fourth team foul for Vanderbilt here in the second half. Four and a half minutes to go. And it's just been uh, Vanderbilt trying to play catch up. They haven't let, let Alabama get too far out in front. Just a two-possession game right now, and another foul against the Commodores. And that's yeah, going back to Sears being strong with the dribble. Patient. And he's just probing. He's just probing. What can I get away with? And then he makes that nice explosive move and creates contact. Sears, top of the key three, and he buries it. Sears up to 17. If you get caught up on that screen, Sears is going to pull up. If you go under that screen, he's going to make you pay. I do not see Ezra Mignon on that Vanderbilt bench. And as I say that, Mignon limps back out of the Vanderbilt locker room. Tapped around a couple of times, and Rivera Torres has it. Lawrence. Camateras. No good. Boy, that was a wide open look for the Commodore. Sears back the other way. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Sears is taking this one over. We're going to have to see a replay of that. That was a hesitation of all hesitations. And I think. Jerry Stackhouse thought that was a double dribble on C. He can get to the rim, so he just puts it down for a dribble, does not bring the ball to touch his left hand, makes it more of a crossover, and that's a move we practice all the time. Fake that pull up, throw the ball in front of you. Turnover. Here's Sears. Had it blocked by Rivera Torres. Rivera Torres back the other way, guarded by Sears. He is active for Vitt Torres. Woo. Again, Mignon back on the end of that Vanderbilt bench, but watched him walk out of that little tunnel area, and he was definitely limping. So Tyron Lawrence going to have to take it on his shoulders. Excellent possession to get it into where Tyron Lawrence is most dangerous. Turning that corner. Right here, you see that great block by Rivera Torres. Good timing. Secures the basketball. 
Tyron Lawrence getting to that strong left hand. He's got a great finisher with his right hand too, but much more effective going to his left hard driver, especially if he gets hit as well. Presley back on the floor for Vanderbilt. Off the back of the rim. Rebound to Ryland Griffin. Griffin's been quiet here in the second half. At 11 in the first 20 minutes. Has four in the second half. 2.42 to play. Sears. Boy, his eyes have certainly got bigger once Mignon left the court. Rebound right into the hands of Evan Taylor. Uh, Rivera Torres does not lack confidence. No, <laughs> he doesn't. Well, he's, from offensive standpoint, extremely talented. He's active on the defensive end. He's like, I got this. Everybody just get in the way. He does. Fires. Wow. He wasn't kidding. He did have it. Uh, he, the ability at his size, 6'6", he can create space. He's got good handles. Really nice jump shot. And in a clutch, important situation, not afraid to do it. Jordan Williams trying to hang with Sears. Sears, bump, pass. Tough shot there from Latrell Reitzel. He can't get it to go. Seven point game, 143 to play. Lawrence kicks it back out to Williams. Now Lawrence with 12 on the shot clock. Tyron in the lane and it's going to belong to Vanderbilt with eight on the shot clock. That was similar to the the last drive in the previous possession by Tyron Lawrence. That time you see Estrada. Griffin does a good job of, of staying in front of him as best he could. And Estrada is right there. He understands Tyron Lawrence. That's understanding the scout report. He knows Tyron Lawrence is wanting to attack that rim. Rivera Torres says, give me the ball. And again, calls for the clear out. Working on Estrada. Fall away. Oh, my goodness. You can't stop Jason Rivera Torres this afternoon. Inside and count it. They lob it to Grant Nelson. He gets the basket and will head to the line. What I love about this, Estrada, the patience. Look, at he's just waiting. He knows something's going to break free, whether or not he's taking it to the rim or that nice, soft, on time, on target pass to Grant Nelson. Uh, it's 6'11". He understands his job. I'm going to keep it high, catch it, keep it high, throw it up there. Can't convert the free throw. He's missed two today. He was a 92% shooter at the line. And then just like that, Tyron Lawrence, under a minute to go, cuts it to a five-point game. Estrada. Nelson. Alabama taking some clock. Here's Sears. Baseline on Williams. Has it knocked out of bounds. There's 11 on the shot clock. 37.9 seconds on the game clock. 11 on the shot clock. Nate Oates working that baseline. Directing traffic for his Crimson Tide team. Eight on the shot clock. Sears fouled. And that's going to go against Rivera Torres. That'll be his second foul. For the young man with a career high 18. Getting a little physical with Williams and Sears. It just shows you how difficult it is. Sears with that tight curl. And Williams doing everything he can to stay in front of him. And you, know, you create contact, you're the aggressor from an offensive standpoint and forces the referee to make a call. 
So Sears at the line, 78% free throw shooter. Sears, four out of four this afternoon. Well, this would make it a three possession game right here with just 34 seconds left. Well, and this next defensive possessions for Alabama is going to be what Coach Oates was talking about. Are we going to be able to win games with our defense also? And come up with a big. So, needless to say, here, Dave, you got to get a quick score. And you want to get it in bounds. Get it back to either Lawrence, or there you go, Lubin. Got an opportunity. Lawrence for three. Too strong. Tapped around a couple of times and kept alive. Now Williams for three. He's got it. Four-point game with 19 seconds. Okay, dear, I thought they would have been a give and go to get Tyron Lawrence coming down. The ball in bounds, Dave Neal. How many times have we seen that become an issue? Estrada can move on this. Pat Adams making sure he knows he can move. No well, Pat Adams caught Evan Taylor. They wanted a quick foul. They got a quick foul. Sure did. Sears, 78% free throw shooter. If, who, I don't know if that yeah, Mark Sears going to the free throw line. Going to put an extra tenth of a second, I believe, back on the clock to make it 19-2. You never know. That may be a difference. It seems to always make a difference. Oh, Grant Nelson at the free throw line here. Taylor now with four fouls for Vanderbilt as Nelson. Again, we've talked about his excellent free throw shooting. Coming in a 92% free throw shooter was 48 of 52, but here this afternoon, just one of three. Looks solid right there. The young man, a fourth year transfer out of North Dakota State. First team preseason All SEC after having an exceptional career at North Dakota State. First team All Summit League last year. Couldn't get that one to go. No timeouts for Vanderbilt. Rivera Torres all the way to the basket. That didn't take long. He's up to 20 now. 10 seconds. And Ryland Griffin is fouled. And this oh. is exactly what Rivera Torres needed to go. Needed to do straight to the basket, get a quick one. Puts his head down there, finishes strong. He is really, and he's played. He's played exceptionally well up to this point. But this is certainly first non first conference game. Talk about breaking out. The ninth team foul against Vanderbilt. So still a one and one. And here is Rylan Griffin, 82 percent at the line, right? and he can't get it to go. There's a chance for the Commodores. Five seconds. Here's Lawrence and a quick foul in the backcourt. 4.7 seconds to play. You know what's interesting about that is when Bama was getting it in bounds, Griffin had an opportunity to pitch it out to half court to burn a few extra seconds instead of taking the foul. Now they foul there, obviously, the up three. Do you foul or do you defend? So now Lawrence will head to the line for a one and one opportunity. Lawrence, three out of four at the line today. 72% overall on the year. Gets that one to go. Two point game. And again, no timeouts for Vanderbilt. Commentaris, Lubin checking in. Bringing in some size for a potential offensive rebound. Also get some length out there because you're gonna have to, as soon as uh, Bama tries to take that ball out of bounds if it does go in. Want to get some size, some length there to affect the pass. Bama still with two timeouts, though. So. 
In and out, rebound to Griffin. He will take it across the midcourt stripe and a quick foul by Williams with 1.1 seconds. It looked like he elected to miss that yeah. and try to get the offensive rebound. That's why Coach Stack put in uh, the big fellas there. And, and with 4.7 seconds, there's a decision to be made. If we make it, now we're down one. Is 4.7 seconds enough? Bama gets it in bounds. The foul send them to the free throw line. Now we come back and, you know, probably with only three seconds, maybe you're going to get the ball up floor for a deep three or a. Hail Mary three. Well, if Griffin can make this one. It'll be an opening day win for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Off the rim, and there's scramble and a foul. So 0.4 seconds. So there's still so you're saying I got a chance. <laughs> Remember you, what did you say about that point four seconds that was yep. left on the clock? Yeah. See, if you're Griffin, you miss it, you just, there's no possible way Rivera Torres can catch it at the SEC logo, spin, take a shot. I'm going to estimate that at 80 feet. Is my math right? Maybe not. 78-75. Timeout Alabama. They're going to look at this, I guess, and check the clock. That was crazy. Yes. That's it. Yep. You can't argue with that one, right? That one's simple. We can figure that out. Well, he missed the first one. It doesn't matter. And Alabama may not have been real pretty, but they pick up their opening win, and they don't.